What's up, makers? Happy Tuesday. April Dunham here. Hopefully you all caught the blog post yesterday, but if not, Project Oatdale now officially has a new name. It's Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. And it also went generally available. So hopefully a lot of you, like myself, are really excited about this new functionality that Microsoft Dataverse for Teams offers. But I wanted to make a video for those of you that might be a little bit scared about how you're going to manage your implementation of this. So for those of you that might be worried about environment sprawl from using Microsoft Dataverse for Teams, this video is for you. I'm going to show you how you can utilize some new features of the Center of Excellence to help you monitor and govern your Microsoft Dataverse for Teams environments. But first, here's the intro. So first, let's talk about Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. This functionality has been running under the codename of Project Oakdale for a while now, but as of Monday, November 16th, it officially is called Microsoft Dataverse for Teams and is generally available to everyone. So that was announced in this blog post by Ryan Cunningham. And the blog post is packed full of all kinds of information about Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. But the question is going to come into play on how would you govern and manage the implementation of this? Because as I've explained in previous videos, how this is going to work is you're going to get a Power Platform environment for each team that you create these Microsoft Dataverse for Teams based applications in. So I think it's definitely a valid concern to be worried about having environment sprawl with everyone able to create these applications. That's why I wanted to make this video, and that's where the Center of Excellence Starter Kit is really going to help us. I've spoken about the Center of Excellence Starter Kit in the past as well, but if you're not familiar with it, it's a collection of tools to help you develop a strategy and govern and adopt the Power Platform. They're constantly updating this, and in fact, they just updated this yesterday with some new features that are going to help you manage Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. I'm not going to go through the step by step of how to download the starter kit itself because that documentation and videos and all that is already out there. So I'll reference you to this blog post and you can read and watch all the videos to see how to set it up. What I'm going to highlight though are the new features that are going to help you manage your Microsoft Dataverse for Teams implementation. So to take a look at the starter kit, I already have that installed here in my Power Platform environment. And typically you're going to create an environment just for the center of excellence, which you see I did here. And when you install that, there's several different solutions included in that. So you're going to have some audit logs, core components, governance, and nurture components. And as part of this center of excellence toolkit, you get a Power BI file. And to me, this is one of the most useful things of the whole kit. So I went and I've downloaded and connected that Power BI file to my environment and I've published it. So let's open that up and see what we get with that. They recently made updates to this Power BI file and you see that we have all kinds of goodness within this. We have all these different sections available to us. And now if we look, you know, here's an overview of Power Apps and we can see our top makers and the cities that they're in and our top environments and all of that, which is great. We have the same thing here for Power Automate as well. We can see the total environments, the top flow makers and the same for chatbots. But one of the things I wanna highlight, which is new, is this Microsoft Teams Environments tab for this Power BI dashboard. So without the Center of Excellence Starter Kit, you are a bit limited to what's available out of the box in the Power Platform Admin Center as far as reporting. So if you go to admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com, you'll be able to see some analytics and information here. So for example, we can see a list of our environments and it does designate if something's Teams or a trial environment or developer or default. And we do have some analytics. So if we were to click into Power Apps, for example, we can see some basic usage information, location and service and connector information as well. But this dashboard is giving us much more information. So we can go to one tab here and see just our Teams environment. So we can see right now that I have four total Teams environments. I have one creator and I have 13 applications within those. It even takes me down to the level I can see per each team environment, which one has the most applications. And as I start using this more, it's going to show me the latest app launch of each of these and some more detailed description of what the application is, when it was modified, and when it was created and who created it. 
And then we do have the environments tab, which is a summary of all the environments. So it's going to show your team's environments and your normal environments there as well. So as far as just being able to see and get an overall view of all of your team's environments, this is a good resource. Now let's move on to what else is available to us. The other two things I wanted to highlight are stored here in the governance component solution. If you look below, there are two flows, one for weekly cleanup of Microsoft Teams environment and another for ask for business justification when a Teams environment is created. When you do import the Center of Excellence starter kits, most of these flows are turned off by default. So you do have to come in here and click the dots and turn them on so that you can start using them. So you want to do this for both of these. These two flows are really powerful, especially this business justification flow. So let's open that up and see what's happening. If I put this in edit mode, we'll see that it's actually triggering on when a record is created, updated, or deleted in the environments table in Microsoft Dataverse, AKA the common data service. If we expand out the advanced options, we see that it's able to filter that so based off of if the environment SKU equals Teams, then this knows that this is a Teams environment and not a regular environment so that it should then execute. The next thing it's doing is it's going to get the owner. So it's going to look at the makers and it's going to find the person that created this particular environment. Then it's going to go through and send an email to the person that created it, welcoming them and sending a link to your Power Platform policies that you can define in the Center of Excellence Starter Kit. Now, after the welcome email, what it's going to do is post an adaptive card to the owner and teams and wait for a response. What this is doing is it's going to ask the user to provide business justification for this environment. So it's going to give them an input box where they can put in their justification and a submit button. So that can then be written back to our flow and we can do a check to see if they provided that business justification. And if they have provided it, we can update the record for that environment with that business justification. So then someone can go and review that, see if it's really needed and delete the environment if necessary or keep it if it meets the business requirements. So how this will all work Let's just try this out real quick. So I'm going to go into Teams and we'll go into the Power Apps app in Teams so that we can create an application with Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. And we'll just use one of these sample applications to get started because this will kick off the creation of a new environment. So we'll select Add to a Team and I'll select this Test 7 Team because I don't have an environment created for that right now. And I'll click Set Up Tab and Save. So at this point, this is behind the scenes going to provision that environment and add in this application. So at some point here, if we're patient in a few minutes, our flow should get kicked off. Once that environment is provisioned, we should get a welcome email and then a message here in Teams asking us to provide justification. All right, we were patient in our application provisioned. Now there is a scheduled flow for the COE starter kit that's set to run that syncs down all of these changes and new environments. And that's what will actually kick off that flow that we were looking at to have us do business justification. So once that runs and recognizes that I just created a new environment, then I will get the email and the message in Teams. So it looks like that ran because I can see some alerts. So here we go. We did that on the Team Test 7. So this is an example of that email that we'll get at first. So it's going to welcome us to the Teams environment, give us some information about it, and let us know that if we don't provide business justification within a week of creating this, that we might have our environment deleted. So now how do we actually provide that business justification as part of that flow that we just looked at? Well, that's here. If we notice I have a chat message in Teams and we have this adaptive card posted. So it's going to let us know about the environment that we just provisioned, give us some information. And I'm able to inline here with this adaptive card, put in some text to provide a business justification. Okay, and then I can submit, and this will talk back to that flow that's running, and it's going to update the entity in CDS. So now if we go back and look at that flow, we can see that it ran successfully. I provided a business justification, and it updated that record. Now this ties into that other flow we were looking at. So if you remember, there is this weekly cleanup flow. So what that one's going to do, if we open that up, is this is a scheduled flow. Let's put that in edit mode to take a look. This one's going to run weekly, which of course you can configure the schedule at which this runs. 
it's going to get environments in two increments. So the last 90 days in seven days. So if we look here, it's going to list environments again that are only team environments and that are created less than or equal to either the 90 or seven day increment. In that loop, it's going to check to see if that business justification is empty. Because remember how we're requiring that in the other flow. So as soon as an environment's created, we're asking them to enter that and we're notifying them in the message that if they don't provide that, their environment might be subject to deletion. So this is that other side of the process. If they don't provide business justification, this will actually go and remove the environments. So that's why we're checking here if that business justification is empty or not. And then if it is, and it's in this 90 day block, we're actually going to go and mark this environment as deleted. And we'll go through and we'll delete that and we're going to inform the user via a message in Teams that their environment was deleted because they didn't provide the necessary business justification. These are the three main pieces I wanted to show you as far as managing your Microsoft Dataverse for Teams environments. We have several different components. You have the dashboards so that you can level set and see how many environments and applications in those environments are there for your Microsoft Teams implementations. We have that flow that's going to help us govern and make sure that the environments that are being created in Microsoft Dataverse for Teams are actually necessary. And then you have that automated flow that's going to go run weekly. And if people aren't providing the necessary business justification, then it can actually delete those environments so that you don't have environment sprawl. Each of these flows can be customized so that it can go through different approval processes if you need to before it's deleted. Whatever your business requirement needs, you can do that with this. So the COE provides you a good starting point for templates as far as governing it, but you can customize them to your needs. So I hope this has eased some concerns that you might have as far as using Microsoft Dataverse for Teams. So rest assured that you can govern it thanks to the COE starter kit. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you in the next video.